The VR amphitheater was packed, as usual when a pre-warp species was discussed. Some species relished in the occasion to feel superior, others wanted intel on possible allies, some just wanted to laugh while others were looking for grim warnings, foretelling the collapse of a civilization. The three dots over the presentation desk turned to a loading prompt, then, in a nice flurry of special effects, the speaker appeared. Good journey, class! The Frimian exclaimed through one of his most brightly tuned voice pipes. As I see we have full attendance, I will have to give the usual introductory warnings and disclaimers for the attendees for whom it is the first time connecting to our humble intergalactic teaching establishment. Several avatars in the room slumped, they knew the drill already. Some others, who managed to get access to the highly secure feed through non-official means, wondered why a simple presentation would warrant a deaf class level clearance. As you know, this class discusses matters that might amaze some of you, comfort the loneliness of others, and present some of you with truths you are not ready to process on a psychological level. As a reminder to the more stubborn species, I have to mention that the death toll for this class goes from individual ambassadors up to several wars of extermination between species. As such, this class is also referred to as the Civ Death 101 class. Several onlookers disconnected. Either because the vetting software found out the illegal access, or because they got cold appendages when reminding that just a few weeks prior to the Phenexian ambassador died of a brain epilepsy during class. Some species literally exploded when presented with facts that were in contradiction to their worldview. Watching the connection count drop slightly, the Frimian piped a whistle of relief. From a somber voice frill, he continued. A quick reminder to those who have managed to get into this class through unofficial channels. We love inquisitive students. If you make it through this lesson without any ill effects or existential dread leading to species-wide suicide, we welcome you to join the field of psychar history. Due to the attrition the field chronically experiences, we are always looking for new colleagues to join our ranks. Be warned, though, that you will have to suffer the consequences and will need to be kept under protection for the rest of your life should you choose to join the field. Some civilizations blame us for their troubles, and several organizations revealed through their secondary effects are afraid we might demonstrate their existence. The Frimian was happy he managed to plug his own research into his speech without the broadcasting software picking up a sponsoring plug. A few weeks prior, he had demonstrated the existence of a galaxy-wide shadow economy by a new method using proof vectoring from holes in the datasets. During his lecture, several attempts were made on his life that proved the theory. The sad part of the affair was that a quarter of all Phnexians died in the subsequent upheaval, their species being unable to reconcile their honour with criminal actions 20% of their population was committing. So today we will move to Messier 31's neighbour galaxy, and have a look at a single pre-warp civilization, the Frimian continued. And as I was asked to study less controversial topics for the next century, I thought a pre-warp death world would keep me from upsetting matters. Several attendees couldn't refrain from grinning at the self-awareness and tricks of their professor. Studying a death world would mean the data wouldn't be representative for most species. In a pre-war setting, it would also mean it couldn't upset the intergalactic status quo on the surface. But to the more versed students, this meant the study would be able to show the fundamentals of civilization construction. It would make it possible to show which probability vector theories were true on a small scale. Getting the small scale vectors would, in time, make it able to prove larger trends and might even extend psychohistory to make a more accurate future prediction. Without further ado, let me introduce you to a new mammalian endoskeleton species, as they refer to themselves, the humans. Seeing the reactions in the room, the Thrymian noticed the mischievous glint of understanding from the more knowledgeable attendees. He could already see a few upticks in his patronage accounts, mostly donations from a species who combined a sense of humour and insubordination capabilities. He wondered whether he would be able to publish a paper on the matter when his situation with the Phrenexians had calmed down. Just the name of the species made a few attendees perk up. A species name in itself was a bad sign. It usually meant he was able to catalogue the differences between principles such as us and them. As is usual in psychohistory's tendency to follow a predictable chaos theory model, the tiny butterfly of a species' name would turn into a storm of attributes and predictability as to possible futures.